Hi, this is Dr. Y.S. Rao. In the previous sessions, we have discussed about system design. We have discussed about significance of the compiler and controller. And we have experimented some real-time programming examples related to various data types and the syntax of any compiler. This session is about real-time signals and systems. Before we talk about the peripherals, before we talk about the interfacing of the sensors, before we implement the applications, we need to understand what is a signal, what is a system, and that too, what do you mean by real time? Indirectly, what we are saying is, actually it is a data. When you convert anything from real world into a CPU, what it stores is a number. Types of numbers we have already discussed. But now, instead of data, we see them actual significance, how they look like in real sense. In short, I was always saying, what is a mathematical expression for a given signal or system? How do you represent them? A mathematical equation. Can you write a mathematical equation for this? We do also conduct computation based on this. Forget about applications, forget about interfacing. Just take this EduRobo hardware setup. Develop mathematical models. It is so important unnecessarily we jump to the conclusions without understanding the concepts. So this session is all about, though we have discussed about data, but let us understand what is a signal and what is a system. Though historically we have seen these are all mathematical subjects, but these mathematical Subjects have become mathematical applications. For years, we talked about soft computing techniques. Today, they have emerged as a separate fields, soft computing itself. The reason is the amount of data, what is called big data, huge data, not kilobytes and megabytes, is a terabytes or maybe even more than that, petabytes and so on. So when the data is huge in size, computing the data, right, is a big challenge. And the applications of the data is where this all fields have emerged. So the domains today we have said artificial intelligence and the subset is machine learning, then deep learning. There is another area we call data science, which talks about scientific methods, algorithms and systems to extract the knowledge or insights from the big data. Then the subset is the data analysis, is all about processing of inspecting, cleansing, transforming and modeling of the data. And the subset is data analytics, discovery, interpretation and communication of a meaningful patterns in data. And the subset is a data mining, is extracting the data. But the problem here is people think that data is given, data is there, 
and then we start applying these various algorithms. It is the most unfortunate thing. Data is not given, data is not there, data is generated in real time. Data has to process in real time. It's not just a applying an algorithm on a given data. This will be another blunder otherwise. Say for example, today if you are using a driverless car or a drone or any navigation system, surveillance systems, video surveillance systems, any system in our day-to-day -day life when we are using these systems, they are actually collecting the information from the real environment. In real time, that is natural time. Second is when the data is acquiring, the data is not in the format of what a algorithm is going to process. It's a raw data. Let's say, for example, if you are using a sensor and if you convert the signal, the sensor signal into a data, it may be an integer, it may be an unsigned number, it may be a binary number, it may have some noise in built. The signal amplitude might not be the desired signal. It may have some unwanted information and so on. So the data when you acquire in real time, when you are driving a vehicle, when a missile guided system is scanning the images or a satellite systems, they're all acquiring the data from actual real environment. So, assuming the real timeness, assuming the real signal is a problem. That's the reason why this course of the first layer of Internet of Things, that is perception layer. Perception layer is all about or you can also say data link layer is all about sensing computation, right? The sensing has to be in real sense, not that data is given. So when your data itself is huge in size, this is where artificial intelligence comes into picture. It means creating a smart machines to mimic human behavior because human is naturally intelligent and is become intelligent because for a period of 20-25 years he has acquired the data, he is processing the data, accordingly he is making the judgment. So that amount of data if a machine is processing in real time and taking a judgment then we say artificially intelligent. So that's the reason why a big data in analysis, we also say artificial intelligence is the superset. Then comes to machine learning, which is a subset of artificial intelligence, which builds a model based on a training, the data to make some predictions. So machine is evolving, machine is learning based on the models you have selected and you are training the data to do those kind of a predictions. Then the deep learning is a subset of machine learning, is a class of machine learning algorithms to solve some complex problems. They are you are unable to solve the problems in a simple set of equations. So probably you require a complex mathematical models. 
data science is a subset of artificial intelligence itself is a area of statistics scientific methods to extract meaningful and insights from the data so it's a science all right so keeping in mind why it is so important to understand real time signals and systems because these emerging fields are all came from signals and systems only in short about the real time data so we have discussed about particularly this hardware we are using a compiler called arduino compiler however maybe for a shorter period of time we are using eventually we will use some hardware specific compilers so in this compiler whenever you create a project project means two loops one is called void setup another is called void loop so by default what we call is a sketch sketch consists of two functions so void setup function is whatever you write here is executed only once and the another function void loop whatever you write here is executed in a infinite loop now it is your choice what do you want to put in void setup and what do you want to put in void loop this is the structure of a arduino compiler what they believe however looking at their structure you can still create your own functions you, you can create your own service routines multitasking environment and build your own real time scheduler generally speaking void setup means the hardware initialization data types defining the variables so we use such kind of a one time executable code in the void setup since we started writing a program for a input output lines of a controller which is having only two states either high state or low state high state means here 3.3 volts low state means 0 volts so the syntax for using the digital input output lines is pin mode means the behavior of the pin you are saying right the input or output means the direction of the data of the pin is it a taking inside the cpu or the cpu is giving to the outside world pin number means which pin probably the ic may be having 15 pins 30 pins 38 pins and so on so you need to mention for which pin you want to configure the behavior as a input or output so that's the purpose of pin mode pin mode means the behavior that is the you can say direction of the pin whether it is a input or output let's say led led is a output let's say switch switch is a input sensor is a input relay is a output and so on after configuring the direction of the pin now you want to either write the data or read the data so two possibilities from the pin in case of a writing the data again mention the which pin to which pin you want to write the data and what is the value you want to write again you have only two possibilities either low state or a high state the opposite case is you want to read the pin digital read digital read means now here from outside world you want to take it inside the cpu like switch or a sensor but digital read means only two possibilities either low or high you can read it so that's why define the variable name integer value and digital read but out of that some 30 pins which pin you want to read so mention the which pin you want to read pin number so that is the input 
so you can write a program saying that define the pin number which pin you want to configure then in void setup you configure that particular pin saying output then void loop digital write again that pin high value you want to send so instead of mentioning the pin number every time in the beginning of the program itself you can mention led pin means 13 what do you mean by 13 30 means pin number out of 30 pins which pin that you define here so that entire program you don't need to again and again repeat that number the beginning of the program if you initialize simply you can use the name the variable name so this will initialize this 13th pin as output and here it will write as a high state means 3.3 volts will be applied if you connect a led in common cathode form high state will forward bias the led and led will be on that's the program the another useful program which i have demonstrated in my previous session is serial communication whenever you want to transfer the data from the controller to some other system either through usb or through wi-fi or through bluetooth whatever the data is always transmitted serially though inside the cpu the data may be 8 bit 16 bit 32 bit and so on but when it comes to outside the world you want to transmit the data through one single pin let's say txd transmit data or rxd receive data or both re transmit as well as receive we call it full duplex so in any case 16 bit 32 bit whatever may be the size of the data the data is transmitted one bit at a time that is called serial communication so you need to initialize it first called serial begin so when you want to transmit the data serially say begin and in bracket with what speed that is called bird rate number of bits per second with what rate you want to transmit the data that number you mention in the bracket but be careful whatever is the number you specify here same number should be specified at the other end for example if this cpu you configured as a transmitter other end you configure as a receiver then transmitter speed and receiver speed should be same not even a single bit you cannot differ that's the purpose of bird rate or we also called synchronizing the asynchronous system because two systems are working with a different clocks with different speed but when it comes to communication we are synchronizing them because the bird rate number is same speed is same then the another useful command is called serial print so in the bracket whatever you put it in the quotes that will be transmitted serially it's always in escape form that's why we put it in quotes but this is a print print means we are under the impression that generally in turbo c print means displayed on computer monitor scan means read from the computer keyboard that is how your standard input output functions work in turbo c but in embedded c generally print serial print serial as the name says serial dot print means transmit the data serially serial dot scan means receive the data scan means read sorry read means receive the data serially if you want to verify whether serial communication is busy or free you can read you can use this command called serial dot available why do you want to read because serial communication itself is a slow process if you want to verify the status readiness of the serial port then we say read serial available or not and compare if it is available then only either you transmit the data or receive the data the next command is called serial dot read 
which is exactly opposite to serial dot print. In this case, we want to read the data from some other device and assign to some variable. So, whatever the data comes through serial port will be stored in this variable and you define as a character because whatever you read is a ASCII value, byte by byte you are reading. So, that is why it is also called as a byte oriented protocol because one byte at a time you get it, not a block of data. So, you have to read byte by byte every time. All right, so how do you write a program? In the void setup, you say serial begin because you are initializing the serial port with the speed of 9600 bits per second. That is your bird rate. And void loop, you want to display some message. So, serial dot print. LN means every time next line, new line. So, that it won't display on the same line. In the quotes, whatever you specify your string will be displayed on your computer monitor. Means serially it will transmit. And the while loop, if you want to verify whether serial port is busy or available, you can read serial dot available and check whether it is a 1 or 0. If it is ready, then you can read serial dot read and assign to some variable. So, this is for reading a character, this is for writing a character. There is a analog to digital converter in this controller. Like we have seen serial, which is serial communication. We have seen GPIO, which is again a binary. But analog is not digital. Analog is not serial. Analog is a continuous varying signal. Amplitude is continuously varying. So, there is an inbuilt analog to digital converter. If you want to read A to D, right, then you can use this function called analog read, not digital read or write. Here it is analog read. Analog read means the signal is changing, amplitude is changing anywhere between 0 to 1023, 10 bit form in case of a ESP8266. In case of a ESP32, it is a 12 bit. So, analog read will give you 12 bit means 4095, anywhere between 0 to 4095. That means your signal amplitude, if you are continuously changing from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts, the equivalent BCD number it gives is between 0 to 4095, 12 bit form. So, this is the function for, for example, if you have a sensor like temperature sensor, right, humidity sensor, then as the temperature is changing, the amplitude of the signal will change. That signal you want to convert into some BCD form anywhere between 0 to 4095. So, connect it to A to D converter pin of the controller then use this function called analog read. Alright, so how to use this function, you can see uh, one is serial port because we want to display the data on computer monitor. Then you can see analog read, right. So, this time we want to read the signal not digital form, analog form, amplitude we want to read and mention the name of the pin, which ADC pin you want to use. After that serial print and mention this variable so that number will be displayed on your computer. Alright, so that is about at least few typically used hardware related commands what is called embedded C in Arduino compiler. Now once again let us discuss about how many input out pins you have? You can see 2 to 13 here, then 15 to 23. So, these are all GPIOs. All these you can see GPIO, this 
color orange color is all general purpose input outputs which have only two states either zero state or one state it could be input or it could be output uh, the same pin also behave like a analog pin which pins you can see adc 0 pin number 2 to 13 here 18 to 20 here they act as a also analog green color means the amplitude of the signal you can vary anywhere between 0 to 3.3 volts opposite case is this dac pins so dac this pin number 8 and 9 behaves opposite means digital to analog conversion means if you have any number inside your controller and if you want to convert into analog form means amplitude continuously you want to change then on pin number 8 and 9 dac is available which will generate the signal by changing the amplitude Again, it's a 12-bit digital to analog and analog to digital converter. Means maximum number is 4095. Minimum is 0. All right, so I'm sure all of you have fabricated. Your board is ready. We'll put the uh, controller and then we'll start programming. Now, as I said, before we talk about the sensors, and output devices let's understand what is a data i already said the emerging fields of data science artificial intelligence machine learning in short is all about big data analysis right so it's all about in short is all about signal right is all this all the fundamental subjects for this emerging fields is signals and systems Therefore, in the rest of the session, let's discuss about the signals and their mathematical models. The signals can be classified based on their number of variables. One variable, two variables, three variables, four variables. If the signal has a only one variable, we call it as a one-dimensional signal. Examples are all the censored signals, any sensor, temperature, pressure, humidity, radiation, any signal, when you are converting a signal into a number, time domain signal, it's a one dimensional signal. So speech, for example, music, computer data, they're all one dimensional signals. So in short, all sensors, transducers, when they convert physical parameter into electrical signal, it's a one-dimensional signal. The second type of signal is a two variables that is called, let's say, picture. So whenever you have a image so it has two dimensions x-axis as well as y-axis whenever you do any image processing applications when you acquire the image in real time and if you process the data of a image then you are processing in two dimensions similarly there is a another dimension x y z three dimensional signals so video processing where you have three variables so it's a third dimension is also there there is another concept called four dimensional signals so it's not only the volume of the data in xyz direction and you're also adding some time stamp there that's the fourth dimension However, we are not uh, talking about two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four-dimensional signals. As far as this session is concerned, it's all about one-dimensional signals. As you can see, 1D means only one variable which is changing. 2D means 
in two dimensions x as well as y the variables are changing three dimensional means x y z in three dimensions the variables are changing like a cube if you add one more dimension like a time along with x y z then you can say it is a four dimensional signal 4d signals okay so these signals when you acquire the signals from various sensors from the environment you can classify them as a deterministic and random signals deterministic as the name says you can predict right you can you can represent a mathematical expression and there is a expression exist between the input and output so they are called deterministic periodic almost periodic modulated pulse signals signals with unlimited duration and unlimited energy random means non stationary or stationary non stationary are all bio signals biological signals they are random in nature non stationary in stationary with uniform distribution normal distribution and other distributions so let us see how we represent these signals by either deterministic or a random signals we understand looking at the applications of this internet of things embedded systems product developments even if you take one domain like a bio signals they are again can be classified into eight types of signals the signals which are coming from a heart we called as a cardiogram the signals which are coming from muscles muscle movement called the myograms and the signals which are coming from brain brain waves called encephalography and the signals which are coming from eye eyeball movement retinal they are called oculography and signals which are retina signals called retinography signals which are coming from a stomach movement called gastrogram or cardiogram from heart and so on so these are all coming from various parts of a body so these signals before you use the sensors for processing the signal we also need to understand first of all how to mathematically represent these signals because your entire signal processing right before we talk about artificial intelligence smart devices try to understand the fundamentals of how to represent a signal inside a cpu so model it first can you model a ecg emg eeg right blood pressure blood glucose levels blood oxygen levels so can you write a mathematical expression for that that is important before we directly jump into interfacing the sensors for heartbeat sensors or oxygen sensors and so on all right so looking at the nature of the signals right as you can see how a signal looks like biological signals their amplitude may be changing their frequency may be changing or both may be changing they are random in nature they are periodic in nature and so on so that's why i, I have classified the types of signals so even if you take one case study also 
you will get eight to nine types of signals and it's a huge business the entire world particularly european countries their healthcare sector is completely insured right lot of companies are working on their data analysis because it's a business for them it's a huge business wearable devices and then data centers data analytics and so on okay so when you acquire a signal input signal x of t after that what we do we process the signal right we we send it through some system which will will apply some mathematical expression on it on a input signal and then will convert into some other form then it's your output signal so between your input and output there is a correlation exist and some amplification some attenuation some filtering takes place so that is called system so signal and system this is a fundamental subject for any science and engineering student the whole world is working on applications of signals applications of science is all about systems that is engineering so a system is a closed connection between the input signal and output signal all the procedures and techniques required to convert the input into a output are called a system right a system is a collection of components so what a system consist of some computational units a collection of some components and when they are interconnected provide a signal that is proportional to the signal that was fed into the system right so it will convert your input signal to some other form output signal however a correlation exist so that is called as a system so signals and systems so what kind of system it is right that it itself is a nice subject probably being a science student or engineering student i strongly recommend build these mathematical expressions and model them and demonstrate them before you actually use real world signals real world sensors like a linear systems right what is a linear system it follows the principle of homogeneity and superposition what is a non linear system do not follow the principles of homogeneity and superposition they are complex in nature what is a continuous type of system continuous type of system means it, it depends on continuous values inputs and outputs are continuous signals say for example your actual signal real world signals are continuous in nature and for example right now if you speak something that speech itself is continuous signal and if you use a amplifier not a digital amplifier just a operational amplifier transistor as a amplifier then it is a continuous system however what is a discrete system discrete system means it depends on discrete values that means your input and outputs are not continuous in nature they are discrete means samples means only few samples out of my continuous system i am only storing let's say for example i am speaking but this speech is sampled by my computer a cpu there is a a to d converter analog to digital conversion so based on my amount of memory my samples are limited in the signal few samples i only i am taking so that means i am losing some information some loss of signal is there they are called discrete systems so all digital systems all microcontrollers microprocessors they are all called discrete systems continuous systems means transistors 
operational amplifiers. They're all continuous because they're not sampling. They're processing the continuous signal. Invertible systems. Invertible system means they are planned in such a way to invert the signal of input to the output. However, input is equivalent to output. Only thing is it is inverted. Non-invertible systems. A mechanism is present in such a way that, that the input cannot be inverted. See what happens is inverted. Inverted means say for example if you use a transistor as an amplifier. You apply a signal to the base and if you take the output at the collector then the signal is inverted. Non-invertible means the signal input and output is the same phase relation. The phase is not shifted. Right? In phase. Input and output, if you plot it on your cathode ray oscilloscope or a computer monitor, right? your zero crossing should be same. That is non-inverted. The zero cross is shifting between the input and output. That means there is a delay. That means phase is shifted or it's a completely inverted by 180 degrees and so on. Time variant systems. The output depends upon the time and varies from time to time. So if, if your signal is varying along with the time, Right? The output depends on the time. Right? There is a, right, after x amount of time, delta t, the output is changing. So, time dependent. So they are called time variant systems. Time invariant systems. The output does not depend on the time. It means you, I mean, there is nothing to do with the time. Throughout 24 by 7, it's nothing, it's not depends on the time. The variable is not changing. Static systems. Static system means memoryless systems. It does not have any concern with past or future values. Means there is no history for a static system. There is no past. There is no future. Whatever is there is a present value. Right? It's not storing. If you have a storage of a signal, then you can have past signals also and you can also have futuristic generation, right, prediction because you have a memory. But static means memoryless. Dynamic system means memory is necessary for a dynamic system. It has a strong concern with the past or future values, right, because here dynamic. Dynamic means now you, you have the ability to store the signal. So then when you process the signal, you have the past also. You have present also. And you can predict future also. They are called dynamic systems. Casual systems. Casual, the output depends on the past and the present values only. So if you are building a system based on your past also and present also, they are called casual systems. Non-casual systems, the output depends on the past, present and future values. Alright, so I suggest since it is such an important subject, before we enter into artificial intelligence, machine learning or the subsets of deep learning, right? try to understand the significance of mathematical models the significance of signals and systems. Then we can jump into sensors, data, then data analysis and the predictive algorithms. All right, so let's start working on generate the signals, real-time signals. Like I said, either linear signals where a mathematical expression exists or a nonlinear signals, there is no mathematical expression exist, but still can you model them? Periodic, quasi-periodic, subharmonics, chaotic, and so on, where frequency is changing, amplitude is changing, 
randomly. So I expect this is what I said after the practicing data types you should write mathematical models just quickly I will demonstrate what is square wave can you write a mathematical expression can you write a mathematical expression for PWM waveform can you write a mathematical expression for sawtooth waveform triangular waveform some linear non-linear or some application signals biomedical signals I already said nine signals earthquakes tsunamis right any related such kind of a signals space related signals or the electromagnetic signals radiation signals that that frequency spectrum complete spectrum of a light can you write a mathematical expression for them or the atmospheric related signals like temperature pressure humidity radiation and so on can you write a mathematical expression for them and generate and display so this is what is my first coursework or assignment i would say before we talk about iot protocols cloud computing they're all the technologies they are not science please understand this unless your science concepts are clear there is no point in jumping to technologies because technology keep on changing tomorrow some new technology will come new compiler will come new controller will come new some uh, communication system may come but science remains same so that's why you should not you cannot neglect the science otherwise with half knowledge if you talk about AML data science then you are just a handicapped person because you doesn't understand the where these things are coming from so you always make assumptions that's the most dangerous thing so let us uh, write the mathematical models for various signals and systems maybe few case studies can understand there are n number of signals and systems just for basics to understand what is real time what is the mathematically representing a signal how they behave when you use different data types and so on so to begin with let's see square wave so this square wave 